Welcome back to Worlds 2019. Fun Plus Phoenix and Invictus Gaming just set the second highest deaths in a game in Worlds history. The record was set in 2013, and I'm hoping we can break it today. Akali and Pantheon band away. Bank Rogers. I just want to know, did, did you notice how he changed it from kills to deaths? <laughs> Interesting change of phrasing uh -huh. here. Uh-huh. Ah. I, I got trained by the stats team, and now we're going to jump back into draft. Akali, Kale, Pantheon, Rise. I think the Kale ban is not necessary here in the first phase. We're playing fast League of Legends in the early game. We have a lot of fighting. Kale does not offer anything there. I want to see Gragas as a priority because it's the only support that can, uh, sorry, only John who can start fights easily. And yet, our game just went to over 50 minutes there in the last Because of the year. Baron, come on. Nah, nah, okay, and bro. exactly. <laughs> but honestly, the Shy has put in so much work Bad on the second Gale. phase. That's all. <laughs> like they did in the last game. Well, look, let's turn back to game one. Game one, the FPX ban Akali, Kale, Kaiser, exactly the same. So Sire are now open Here as the number one AD carry. Again, if it gets locked in by FPX, it'll only be the second time this year they played. They played it against Fnatic in game one of that series, and then it became a ban for the rest of it. And they do grab it, so Zyra Khan is what we're expecting from FPX. Honestly, it seems we can get a. <laughs> Well, no hesitation there. I was That's the say, cracks again. Okay, Just ban it. They can wait for the Varus pick for last as well. Not uh, that one won't get banned out here quick enough. Kiana actually going over to FPX once again though. Now, that does set up the possibility of those big team fight oriented compositions. Very, very true. Was played jungle obviously by Tian here. Doing B can also grab it in the mid lane. Would be almost crazy if it is if it doesn't get locked in because it's such a power pick in the current meta. Yeah, and you can't give it over to Invictus Gaming. You give that back over on the And they had the chance to take it, but they actually valued the Jace pick. Of course they can flex them between multiple lanes as well, but it's really and, a big, big pick. And the Gragas. We keep on highlighting the Gragas here for the junglers. Love the Gragas. Him. You know, being that initiator, it's such a big possibility for that late game. But once again, they fall back to Kiana Rumble. It's a tried and true combination. Uh, Clutch Gaming does it a lot in the LCS, if you're used to watching that team. They even did it here at Worlds as well. These big AoE ultimates trying to win those team fights. Last minute swap though for Doin B. He was liking that Nautilus play, and so was I. It might also be again Nautilus support. Crisp is not a huge Rakan player, only yeah. picked it once. But also because you don't really play Zaya, and you want to combine the Zaya Rakan, obviously, so it makes it harder. I still think he obviously can't play it. Uh, if it is available for him, but instant ban away by IG. And you see this deviation here? I actually like this. Giving more safety to Jackie Love so he doesn't have to rely on a Tom Kench pick later because we're going into the second round of bans. If you locked in the Varus there, second round of bans come out, Tom Kench is taken away, and then Varus is very low mobility champion, can't face that much crowd control. So intelligent swap here of yeah. the Ezreal priority for IG. But still very interesting, like within this series, how Jace was not actually contested in the first phase at all in the first two games, and then it becomes the pick for IG over Kiana in the draft. And it's still a flex pick, right? Because of course. Rookie's Jace is oppressive. He's played a ton of it as well, and can easily be swapped around. Definitely played it once this world already, and we're about to find out whether it be the Shy or Rookie running that. The last ban is going to be the Vladimir in conjunction then with the Leona. Now Invictus Gaming will give us a little bit more indication the team comp's going to shape up like support picks that gives you that flexibility to flex the Jays. I mean, just they're trying to just draft a, a lane they can leave alone. Uh, but I will say, however, Alistar behind is really, really weak. Like, he really struggles in the game. He just goes in and dies, effectively. Uh, but he does have his ulti to buy time. So they're trying to draft a super safe bot lane and then play heavily towards top side. The GP is what I was talking about last game. It is the go-to blind pick for Gimgoon, where you can play heavy bot side. Thresh pick coming in as well. A lot of kill pressure for FPX. Roam potential with the Nautilus. IG needs to keep doing be in this mid lane. They cannot let him and Tian take over the game and roam to bot side. What will the aggressive pick this time around be for Rookie? Is it going to be a swap of Jace to mid lane? Go with a similar mentality of pushing in, trying to keep him pinned? Or back to the Lucian? Oh, okay. So Gangplank top for Gimgun is his most played domestic champion. Nine games, seven wins, and two losses. Technically, this Jace and Lucian can still flex for another Lucian 20 top seconds. used to be a sick counter It was what we expected, well, what I would have expected. The top triangle of this map is such a dangerous area for FPX in the early stages of this game. 
it is just going to be IG trying to push as hard as they can on the top half of the map, trying to capitalize on these matchups they're getting for their solo laners, which goes right into the identity of yes. this team. You've got the best top laner in the world up there. But and you know, Kobe, and he's we on will, Lucian. They swapped it. We will talk about this in the game as well. The mid lane is not just Ning and Rookie versus Tian and Doing B. They keep setting up this bot lane to push early from FPX, and then Crisp keeps roaming to mid like he's done all year long. Sets up a three versus two suddenly, and then Rookie can't keep pushing. Here's my thing though with the Ezreal pivot, which I love so much from IG. You can leave the Ezreal by himself, even if the wave is pushed in. Send your Alistar up there to try and match. And then but can you roam Zaya, first? Then Zaya would have to get there with the teleport or walking up. Um, and you have to look at that. But I'd rather have that be the match uh, than just the su support difference. And of course, I want to see how this game Cheers. plays out. <laughs> Prost, as we would say. And of course, now we're in Madrid, game three of the semifinal. Gentlemen, did you know that the Shy has a 100% win rate on Lucian Top. Ask me how many games he's played. Once it's happened, and <laughs> now we get to see it for Yikes. the second time on this stage. I wish you guys at home could see both the Fish and Kobe rolling their eyes. I'm you. never scared of good players trying new champions. If you're good at the game, you can play any champion. Yeah, absolutely the case. And now we're going to take a look down the Samna Spells. Klepto mid for Rookie on his Jace. And obviously that Lucian top going to be running into the Gangplank. FPX two games in a row have invaded together and they've challenged the first buffs. Horror Invictus and it looks to be similar now in the top half of the map. Not right there though. That looks very similar <laughs> to a rogue game. <laughs> wow, I don't know, I'm having flashbacks. I don't know about you guys. Man, there's some tech issues here. <laughs> Take a look here, though. Yeah, Ward was placed during that invade, so they know where Ning is, and he gets out a defensive one. It's not going to stop this early invade, though. Thanks for helping me, by the way, when I was panicking right there. <laughs> I got Just you. To fish your move your hand away from the button. Uh, let's not misclick our tools on the caster desk again, shall we? Yeah, Kobe. As the invade does not You pan like how out. he tried to go, hmm, technical difficult. Nobody <laughs> on the Invictus squad goes rogue this time around, and FPX, they've grouped up to defend their own red buffs. So, <laughs> I mean, you are double range bot side now for FPX, so you don't necessarily need uh, the same swap right there. Quick shot still crack it up over here. Oh, Are you so surprised the Vicios lost his mechanics? <laughs> no, no, the worst oh. part is when I actually misclicked, I didn't panic, and I looked at Kobe. I'm like, help me. And he just I, looks at me like I'm an idiot. I'm like, please help me. I got you. I oh, got you, my so friend. So nicely done. Now, so. who is Gimgoon going to look to, though? Because it's a similar situation. We've seen so much Lucian into Gangplank pressing very hot, far up in this matchup. Uh, and off of the early jungle start, they know that Kiana's far away. Okay, of course, we talked a lot about how Crisp would like to come and get Doombi ahead early or sort of unlock Doombi to... He just wants to help him roam. get off a good recall. Yeah. That's like the number one thing. You don't have to kill the mid laner yeah. yet. We know later in the game he can just lane gank into like Nautilus ulti on, you know, Rookie, and then they can try and secure a kill. But in the early game, we are mainly just looking to him just shadow around the lane a bit and not necessarily go for any quick ganks. And you can see... Ning working around that war that he knew was on the Raptor pit, so he doesn't give away any more information. Oh, actually, let's see what happens it, now. That should allow, though, Ning holding that information should allow Rookie to hit top. Well, right, this time around, his team coming in flash for flash. And still going to find a little bit of chunk damage. Dredge line will easily be sidestepped. Tian is still lingering around. Now remember, no flash for Rookie. I, I actually was so surprised Rookie went far enough up to get that cannon minion because Tian had just left mid lane and he knew it was very, very high probability he's still in that brush. Rookie gets back out, gets the money for himself. The Shy is going to have to worry about the chain gank here. Can he kite back up? You want to kite up into those brush. Ooh, Gragas body slam flash against Kiana is so good. You burst her down so quickly. She's back towards mid. But now, did Ning leave the bush? He's still lingering up in the top. The wave, I think, was still pushing towards Kim Goon, so he's fairly safe. Unless they really fancy themselves a ball dive. It's a really smart placement here for Ning for a possible counter gank. Since the Shy has a sweeper and isn't going to be able to put a trinket ward for himself. Does he commit to this right now? I mean, Kim Goon starting to push forward. Ning, body slam flash is still available to him. Combo that 
with good damage out of the shy. I mean, yeah, so either he stays and goes for the, the play to force flash here, or he still waits for Tian to show up. He's drinking. Now he's go up. for it. There we go, gets the flash. No summoner spell traded. A fair amount of time committed, but they get the summoner. And it's such a classic Ning move. Just sit in a brush for like 30 seconds, 40 seconds, just wait it out. You know there's a chance you will either get a flash or maybe you get a kill and just make sure the Shy can keep pushing in on this Lucian. That is one of the most important flashes on the map, though. There is no flash now for FPX in mid or top side. So again, concentrating on the top triangle of the map for Ning on this Gragas is so... Oh, Tian actually slipped over the wall. He's back again. Okay, he's got the sweeper as well, so he knows he's not spotted. He's coming in behind the Shy. The Shy's got the ability to dash away as well as use that flash. And now let's see what's going to happen. Is. Is here comes Tian. We need to find everything connect. Dash forward. Finds the route. The damage comes out as well, but Gingu's late to the party. Can't find the parlay. Can't find the barrel and can't find the kill. And again, really good timing there on, by the Shy on his dash. So he gets the distance. Uh, during that route so that Gim Goon can't follow up with any extra damage, thus saving him the necessity of having to burn that flash. And one of the big stories of the series here is how Tian plays the early game, because technically he has to kind of go everywhere. He wants to play bot side and get them ahead. He needs to protect his top laner who's getting counter picked, and he wants to play around doing being mid so that he doesn't fall behind and he can start roaming later. In this game, he's valued first to go mid, to give Durinbi a chance to push out, and then he goes top to protect Gimgun. Going for the kill there, it's very unlikely to happen. Like, you don't have a good setup to actually kill the Shy, and they didn't even get his flash, but he's protecting his gangplank. And I want to highlight the minion wave right now uh, on the top lane. Because it is pushed up so heavily, and there is still a flash difference in the top side of the map, this is very risky territory for Gimgun. You can see that he's trying everything he can to push this wave in. He knows he has a very limited amount of time to try and shove this to the tower so the Shy can't continue to deny minions here, but it's getting even more treacherous now. And he knows he knows his jungler's bot side. They actually saw the Gragas bot side as well like 10 seconds ago. So now they know high chance he's moved on the other side. And look at that. He's throwing everything he possibly can, but won't be able to get it done. So you have to call the rest of your team. Gimgun now with no place to actually farm. All right, no flash available to him, no ultimate available to him. The Shy is already 10 CS ahead with about five in front of him. Gimgun will get spotted out. Throws down a barrel, got a couple of wards, minions correction to work with, and the Shy not able to punish more. What were you gonna draw there, Kobe? Uh, we're gonna blame that one on Deficio. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna draw where the minions were frozen on the top lane for the Shy because he keeps on holding a large portion of them there. And again, Ning is on the top side with Gragas. They really want to force this. They want to capitalize on the flashless gangplank here. This is the point of power. This is the point. Again, continual denial here. So you can't really help him right now. Instead, bot lane is where you can try and get something. So they're invading in for blue buff. There's an early Ocean Drake they can go for as well. They have full push already with the Zaya and the Thresh. Diving in Alistar is a bit risky, but he is still pre-level 6. If you have four members, you can. There's no TP from the Shy to come down and help. Same for Rookie, he's running uh, with Exhaust in this game. So we just want to see FX control bot side now that it can't really help the Gangplank at the moment. All right, jungle invade from Ning. He knows top side of the map is his. His top laner has the power. Can he get out? He's got flash. There's a decent amount of damage. Very nice barrel there from Ning. Rookie had left the mid lane, so Ning escapes with his life at the cost of his ulti. And he takes away another possible recourse for the Gangplank. Still frozen at 34 CS, by the way. Now he can't even farm the jungle camps over there. Again, Deficio, you're talking about the other half of the map for FPX. They have to make something happen because there is no salvaging this top lane. Well, you will get some plates down here. And of course, the Ocean Drake is important for them to get. It will be a while before there's a TP from the Shy. So as long as he's isolated top, it only sucks for your GP right now. The rest of the team can still do something. Out of the 10 players on the Rift, the third with the lowest gold are the supports and then Gimgun. He is still at 34 CS. As it stands, the shine nearly double. Now the Dragon was secured. This is what we talked about a lot. Ning is making his way up and that is still a flashless GP for a few seconds longer. And now if you don't feel like you can dive bot lane because of Alistar as FPX, you can dive mid lane. You have ulti from doing B against Jace with no extra mobility. If you move in the Thresh with the Kiana, you can tower dive Rookie very easily and use that to get 
some objectives. All right, I want to return to the top triangle game plan. Uh, never mind. We're waiting no, for this is the correct way. Wait for FBX's answer. Just take here. plates. But again, Invictus Gaming now that the big wave is building up for the shy, he can no longer hold it. So if you dive the level six gangplank on that big wave and continue to deny, continue to put him in a hole, that is where you really blow this game open. But Ning is here on the bottom half of the map, not going for the top play. I, I just love hard camping an area of the map so hard that you completely take a member out of the game. As you see on the mini map, that huge wave top will crash into the gangplank now. But very key to highlight, Kobe, that the Shy is playing for himself. He is the one getting very far ahead with the way he's playing lane right now. He hasn't killed the turtle, even gotten close, so he can't actually go elsewhere on the map. I don't want him to go elsewhere. I want Ning to stay here, deny that barrel explosion of minions we just saw from the gangplank. Play more off your strengths, I, I guess. I definitely agree with Ning. He should have been there. And super important to note that, that those barrel explosions you just saw, Kobe, is the first minions that Kim Goon picked up since six minutes and 17 seconds on the clock. He was denied farm for over three and a half minutes of play. That's the impact of what the Shy and Ning were able to set up with those early ganks. And now it's important to talk about how it's bot lane snowball versus top lane snowball. Not in terms of kills, but where are you actually winning lanes. It's a lot easier to win the game and snowball the game through bot lane. Because you're unleashing two players on the map and one of them brings a lot of wards with him. CC setup, that's the support of course. While the Shy, he's playing for himself and he's becoming very strong, he's not able to assist his team right now unless they're fighting around him. FPX is starting this Herald. All of IG are moving up to stop him. Jackie Love, no TP on his side, so he can't actually join the fight. Teleport is coming in now on the FPX side. The Shy's not yet left the top lane. Accelerated Shock Blast comes out. The dredge line will find a target onto Ning. Ning won't even get a chance just yet. He doesn't even get to throw the ultimate. That first blood picked up for Fun Plus Phoenix. LWX lets the feathers fly, jumps up in the air. The supreme display of talent locks up enough time for Bowland to go down. Now the Shy is trying to run him up. He's using the relentless pursuit. Gets caught up, throws down the exhaust. Gets a root down to Rookie. Now here comes Jackie Love. Crisp gets caught by the Essence Flux. That's a four for three in favor of IG. Yeah, and they actually had Jackie Love walk all the way up up there on the Ezreal to pick up the extra kill. Gim Gungo on the bottom side will get the first turret for FPX oh, yeah. and some money back for themselves. This was such a huge play right here because IG started to move towards the hell when Jakilov was still running from bot lane without TP. So FPX knew the moment Doombi arrives, instant engage. He's the one calling for it. Captain Shy Gim Goon. will find him. Run, Both level run, 8 run, right now. Fight, fight, fight. Teleport expended for that play. The tower fell as well. So it could come back to haunt them. And this is a replay of how it all started. Yeah, you can look at the minimap and see Jackalove. He's on his way. Doombi comes in, instantly calls guys. There are only three players here. Let's fight. The Shy will come from behind. But we can get a kill before he shows up. And right now, even though this Lucian is, of course, very strong, if you just look at him versus the, the Gangplank, the four members from FPX by already getting the first kill, can still trade very evenly. And look at the, the team fight mechanics. Paying attention to those cooldowns. As soon as the Kiana ultimate is expended on one member, that's when Rookie and the Shy go all in. That's when the soul laners can finally enter the fight and clean up the extra kills. Top side though, focus once again. 100% kill participation for Rookie in that fight. Three kills secured. He's already got the Black Cleaver, and he continues to stack the tier as Crisp's death sentence will not sentence anyone to death. The Rift Herald summoned. Still a minute and a half of plates as this pressure up top. And we keep following the bot lane from FPX. They're the ones moving around, dictating where they are attacking. Meanwhile, the Shy will try on the bot side to secure a turret and some plates for himself. Again, making him the stronger member. He needs to, at some point, be able to take down the turret, and then he can actually use his split push to really put pressure on FPX. Until that point, the bot lane with Zaya and Thresh can keep moving around and try and force some plays. Well, they got themselves some plates in the top lane before the Herald went down. Started moving towards that mid lane, but Rookie was able to defend in time. He's level 10 for now. Got a very healthy bounty on his head. And at 13 minutes in, this is... It feels like a slower tempo game, a slower paced game than the first two in this series. And if you look at the mini-map with the Infernal spawning, FPX are the first to the punch. Yeah, it's about to speed up here, quick shot. Once again, though, no teleport on Jackie Loves Ezreal. So if they really wanted to contest around Kiana Ultimate and Gangplank Ultimate and Nautilus Ultimate, then they would do so at very, very high costs here. Walking into Coming the down. river, there's so much territory for FBX to actually get those off with. 
Sian's going very low. True Shot Barrage is available to him. Chris gets the death sentence. Damage comes out. Supreme display of talent is thrown down. And Gim Goon is running for his life. The shot will flash over the feathers. He can't find Gim Goon. The dragon was picked up by FPX, but now what can Doombi and the rest of the team do? Doombi's locked inside the pit and he's locked down and he's shut down. The accelerated shot class goes out. It's a one for one, but the Drake goes to FPX. FPX again, they are just one step ahead. They were the ones who pushed in top lane so that Jackalov was forced to sit and wave clear. Then they move all the members down to Drake. Jackalov ends up moving down too late because he has to catch the wave. Now, because of the fight actually going in favor of IG despite trading one for one, they can go straight mid and secure the turret here. So it is a, a Drake for a turret as a trade. And for them, you know, the mid lane turret actually is quite big and setting up uh, the transition. Let's take another look at the fight though. First, again, you have to keep your eyes on so many of these big cooldowns. Stun goes down there while Tian is able to get the dragon. That lantern brings LWX over to the Shy. And this is what completely changes the team fight. If if they did not get that Dark Passage to bring LWX over, the Shy was, would have been able to kill off Gimgoon, and then the rest of IG would have been able to collapse and get more out of this. But it was pretty good transition uh, of him down to the bottom half to be able to save it. Yeah, we had a slower early game because, again, the Shy valued freezing and denying over, like, tower diving with Ning and, like, killing. That could have been the case. Obviously, bot lane was hard against the Alistar, so that's why we ended up not having multiple tower dives and... 10 kills before 10 minutes. I think FBX pretty happy with the way they've been able to get both of these early dragons play out this mid game despite having. Oh! Well, Ning's almost gonna find Chris. That's flash for flash. The barrel comes up, but is caught out by the stopwatch. Rather, Death Sentence Kinex as well. Rather, the dredge line. Now the pulverize comes down, and FBX, they had the numbers advantage. They were pushing the top lane, and they find the kill onto Baolan. Bad boy, Baolan. He got baited <laughs> in there. Oh, and yeah. I mean, you could already see Ning was backing off because they were aware Thresh on top side of the map. Uh, meanwhile, Ning really wanted to finish off that kill, wanted to finish off that pick, but a good stopwatch to Vicio is worth <laughs> so much. Are we setting ourselves up for some more shenanigans in the mid to late game here? Save your voice for now. Even Later. game in gold. Five to five in kills. Two to one in towers. And the first few items are starting to pick up. The Shy learning to counter the scoreline of one, two, three. He's now putting pressure on this <laughs> bottom tower. And I'm looking at the mini map. Thanks, Kobe. I'm glad I laughed. It didn't deserve it, but I'll take it. And FPX, they do have some support coming in. You remind me of someone. Oh, uh, really? Oh, it's Freak. Oh, David. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just got more hair. As uh, Invictus Gaming, Damn. they don't overstep. Oh. They don't get caught out. And there's no real huge commitment to that lane. The Shy's still happy to pull ahead. 50 CS up over Gimgoon on this sort of like link counter. And it will be one of the big talking points as yeah. we continue to transition. Because we know IG wants to play 1-3-1. Uh, at least in terms of their draft, they want to play 1-3-1. Ezreal on two items is one of the best champs at holding mid. And then you have Jace winning one lane and Lucian winning the other. Perma push down against Nautilus and, and GP. FX cannot stop it if IG are completely split up. Knowing IG, they will start grouping at some point, but they actually shouldn't. They should keep splitting the map. Exactly, and I want to highlight, because we were talking about how important the mid lane tower take for them was. It opens up both these pathways for Invictus to back up that split push, right? If you have the threat of these wards all throughout yep. the blue side of the jungle that you can see, they know that they can then force down this tower. That is money that's just standing there waiting for them to take. And always just pick one side of the jungle, of the enemy jungle that you play towards. This case, it was the top side IG said, there's a tier one turret we can get. Let's play heavily towards that. They ignored wards on bot side, and that's correct. You cannot ward in the current a game everywhere. There's not enough wards in the game. So pick one side, play heavily towards it, and you will get your turret. Exactly. And guess what chapter two to that book is, Divisio? Bottom half of the map. Now that you've gotten the objective app of top side, you can swing all of your wards, move them down to bottom, take the tower, set up for Ocean Dragon, another 45 seconds away. And that's what looks like the case. Teleport used into the mid lane. FPX, they're going to challenge the Raptor camp. And as it stands, you can already see Baolan, he's invaded the red buff. He's already started to set up some vision for that dragon. Look at uh, Jackie Love here actually going uh, Triforce. I definitely expected Iceborne against a lot of physical damage on the other side. And you can really use the zone control as an Ezreal here when you have Lucian and Jace next to you. You have a lot of range on your side. You just want to keep the enemy from getting towards you. So I actually really thought he was going to go for that. He plays uh, in a region with Uzi, and you need to have the most possible damage output. No, no defenses. Best defense is a good offense, they say. 
And that's what we saw in game two. Uh, 60, 59 kills, 60 deaths throughout the game. And the dragon is alive, which naturally means we're going to fight over this dragon. Kim has got ultimate TP. He is also level 11, and he's caught that wave in the bottom. The rest of FPX, they're trying to contest and challenge mid. Doing the rushed hourglass again against all their AD carries on the other side. Dream Kiana ultimate. This positioning is so big. Look at that small corridor. Invictus Gaming have to rush through. Okay, Predator was used to. Envy's looking up. There goes that oh. death charge. The flash comes out. That's a fantastic Kiana ultimate. Battleland's going to be the first to fall here. No, it's actually wrong. One, two, three. Invictus just get dumpstered around the river. How can you keep doing this? Right through the corridor into the Kiana Nautilus right there. Really good job of FPX capitalizing on this. Again, they draft these big AOE ultimates. Invictus Gaming come walking straight through one by one. They get blown up in the dragon over to FPX. And Delusion has been farming for himself all game long. He gets soloed by the jungler after this. This is the initial ult that forces the Shy over the wall. Then ulti comes in from Kiana and Tian. He sees the Shy on the other side, jumps oh. straight at him, and just takes him out of the fight instantly. This Kiana pick, it was huge in game one because we had so many fights around these objectives. In game three, IG did not want to grab it in the first phase and they gave it over to Tian again. Yeah, sick flash. Uh, Kiana ultimate wraps around the wall. It would hit him on the other side as well. All right, what do they do with this though is the biggest turning point. Once again, we have the position where FBX with the gold lead, with the dragon lead, with the team fight tools to set up, now they just have to move them in once again. Dragon's off the side of the map so they can turn their attention with the wards and vision towards Baron. And so important, Gimgun 202 on this gangplank. Yes, he's down 60 CS, but after the gigantic deficit he started in, mm -hmm. he has been able to benefit in probably 50% of his team's kills. Now starting to step forward while Tien and Doombi are clearing out this Baron vision at 21 minutes. The mid outer still stands for IG. And it's such an odd setup, especially for Baolan, who wants to go in as Alistar. Right. What happens around mid? Crisp is in trouble, eats so much damage from the culling, flashes away to safety at just the last second. Baolan now looking for the initiation, he's found himself and engaged in the Doombi. B. Now the engage turns around, that's already a kill, that's a dead nick. Now that's a great dredge line, Doombi re-engages. Crisp is still waiting. He's a lantern bot. He can save somebody if he needs to. LWX left the feathers fly. Won't find the root, but it may not matter. It's a double kill for the Kiana. Do it be gets himself another. Now Jackie Love's in trouble. Need to parlay to the face and give him unity on. They can't chase for more, but that's three good kills for FPX. It's another fight in their favor. The Shy walked forward alone, tried to kill the enemy's support. And then the rest of IG starts engaging, and FX, they were just sitting in the river. They were waiting. Tian again managed to get so much CC and damage down that sets up this fight for his team. FPX are consistently showing they are a better team than IG, even if IG may have better individual players. Three games in a row, you see the decision making and the, the squad grouping up, and they get themselves another Baron, they get themselves another lead. All right. I'm over it. Don't give Kiana to Tien ever again. <laughs> level 13 now. He's got a two-level lead, by the way. All right, so it starts out very advantageous. Why not for go for Invictus. LWX here? Exactly. Who's standing right next to him. Anyway, fight is happening. Then look at Tien. He just waits. And now he knows, oh, actually, they're going towards me. Bunch of burst damage. Good setup onto Ning. They try and chase him. He lands multiple uh, rune on multiple members. And now they can just kill the rest. Then with the re-engage here, LWX with an offensive Zaya ultimate to zone out Invictus Gaming. He splits the team fight with that ultimate. It's almost oh. at the cost of his life. As you see him burning down there with the corrupting potion. But All chat worth. He manages to survive, Kobe. The thing is, I can hear the tone in both of your voices. Invictus Gaming not choosing the right targets in the heat of the moment. Tian's got the ultimate available to him, got the flank position set up, got the vision control in the northern quadrant of the map. Oh, here Jack we go. Up will escape, but the E and the Flash gets caught up there by the Nautilus ultimate. The first tower has fallen. Look at Tian. Tian can come in from behind. He has assassinated Jackie Love. And Baolan is now escaping with his life. He's flashed to safety, but it's the Shy that goes down. It's a double kill for LWX, and it is a 10 kill lead for Fun Plus Phoenix. The discipline on Tian there, waiting until Jackie Love gets into range for the Q front brush. He doesn't have to spend his ultimate because he didn't force it. He waited for that range to be there. Then he gets a double kill. FPX are inside the base. They've 
got Baron Buff, and they lay waste to Invictus Gaming. 15 second death timers for Rookie and the Shy, and are starting to think that Fun Plus might go for the win. It is a 7,000 I also think lead. they will go for the win. Eventually. <laughs> I play for fun to this year. <laughs> oh, that's why he's waiting. Hiding in the brush, Jackal of things. Okay, maybe I'm fine. I can ult in and join the fight. Because oh. right there, he for sure could have gotten that kill earlier if he used his ultimate, right? You just run at him, boom, uh, full combo. But because he's patient, he saves his cooldowns, then he's able to take the second kill as well. But let's talk about this, like, with the comp IG have. It's the same, you know, we must win the lane super hard with Jace and with Lucian in the solo lanes. But in actual team fighting, they have three range champions and then they have two all-in engage, you know, support and jungle in Gragas and Alistar. Every time they go forward, no one can actually follow. So they just go in and just die. That's what I meant with the Alistar in drafting. If yep. you fall behind, in, in especially this kind of comp, Balan just goes in, buys a bit of time, and then he just dies. And his score will be like 0-10. Yeah. And, and like he couldn't actually do anything different. IG do not have a stronger teamfight comp. That's what they had in the last game to actually win in the late game. Now they're just losing. Well, Balan's gonna get caught by the dredge line, and the Shy takes so much damage! Tia with the supreme display of superior talent. The LPL Summer Champions are knocking on the nexus of the defending world champions and looking to eliminate them from semi-finals. FPX now onto the Nexus turret. They've got themselves a favorable five versus two. Rookie sidesteps the dredge line, uses the exhaust, but he's going to be caught out. Goes hammer form and is killed by Tian again. Eight, one, seven, involved in 15 out of 19 kills. Fun plus Phoenix are looking for more kills before they finish the Nexus, and they will find another. Invictus trying to turn around the Nexus, takes a lot a few seconds longer. How have they done with the Nexus? will finally fall 2-1 Fun Plus. FPX now regaining control of the series. Must win situation for IG heading into draft for game number four. And we gotta say now, three games in a row, FPX are looking super good in the early game. They get out of these bad lane matchups. You know, they actually manage to move people around. The Shy, he got really far ahead on his own, but then he joins the first team fight and he actually dies in it. So he couldn't use his big lead. I think it's very clear that IG are not able to shut down their picks early, so they need better scaling. And this one with three range champs and then two all-ins, they couldn't really team fight. I keep going back to that large wave that was built up and crashed yes. into Gangplank. It explodes with one barrel, yep. but that is such a different world if Tian is there again. And they dive that and they kill the Gangplank. You have to commit harder to the split push early in the game, like you're saying, because if you lose that lead, then FPX continually drawing IG to these objectives. They keep drawing them into the Dragon when you've got all the AoE ultimates. Point and click Nautilus ult, a fight will start. Like, there's no way around and it. And it's even more valuable when IG opt into staring down the five-man Nautilus ultimate. They channeled through that time and time again. Uh, interesting note, by the way, uh, for Fun Plus Phoenix, when they have picked up the first Baron at Worlds, they're 9 and 0. Oh. That early game you were talking about, the strength that they're showing time and time again, can Invictus fix it? Can Invictus fix what they have to do to stop it, you know, just to prevent FPS getting that far ahead? Can they? Yes. Will, Will they? they? Okay, okay. <laughs> the devil is in the details, of course. FPX on the verge of knocking Invictus Gaming out. They're 2-1 up. Defending world champions might be the first of four semifinals. Uh, actually, that's it. Fun Plus Phoenix and Invictus Gaming are battling it out in the semifinal. Uh, this is captured with the Oppo mobile camera with anti-shake technology to make sure everything you record comes out perfectly. The LPL champions are just one win away from the world's final. We'll be back for match points after this. Time for Balan to go down. There goes that oh. death charge. The flash comes out. That's a fantastic. 
sticky on ultimate. Bowland's gonna be the first to fall here. No, it's actually wrong. One, two, three. Crisp is still waiting. He's a lantern bot. He can save somebody if he needs to. LWX left the feathers fight. Won't find the route, but it may not matter. It's a double kill for the Kiana. To actually win in the late game. Now they're just losing. Well, Bowland's gonna get caught by the dredge line, and the shy takes so much damage. Invict is trying to turn around the Nexus. Oh, oh, oh. Under a few seconds longer. How have they done with the Nexus? Will finally fall. Two, one, fun plus. So you want to go get that coffee then? Yeah. Whoa. Ow. So you want to go get that coffee then? Yeah, just going to take my headphones off and uh, we're good. Let's go. Welcome to the world, no heroes and villains. Welcome to the war, we've only begun. So pick up your weapon and face.